It's your girl, the Grown Woman Gamer, and today I'm coming at you with another fire commentary. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, comment whether you agree with me or not, and don't forget to share if you care. Today we're going to be talking about three teams that most of us aren't talking about, that people are forgetting, that may just shock us in the postseason. The first team that we're going to talk about today are the Toronto Raptors. The Toronto Raptors have an excellent team. They have a pretty well-rounded roster, very balanced team. I've been talking about that a lot in my videos. They are led by Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Fleet. Van Fleet has had, in my opinion, one of the best seasons that I've seen him have since I've started following the Toronto Raptors when... Um, Kawhi Leonard was there. This is a team that doesn't get a lot of attention, largely because they're in a market that doesn't get a lot of attention. And let's be honest, most people have not paid much attention to the Toronto Raptors, except for that one season with Kawhi, where we all know what the end result was. They won a championship. Nick Nurse is a great coach, and with the roster that he has, they have contended against teams that are better than them. They've won in many of those games, and I don't think that they're going to necessarily be an easy out, especially if they're playing against, let's say, either the 76ers or the Bucks. Now, I do not favor them to win, but we can't discount the fact that they are pretty long, they have young legs, they have the shooting, and they just play with an intensity every night that makes them a worthy contender for any other team in the East. The other thing that we need to consider is the fact that if you are not vaccinated, you're not going to be able to play in any of the games that they have in their home arena. So that might turn out to be a bit of an advantage for them um, if some of these teams don't have a fully vaccinated roster. The next team that I'm going to talk about are the Los Angeles Clippers. For the obvious reasons, we have not really been paying attention to this team. Number one, Kawhi Leonard hasn't been playing. He is the biggest star on this team, and he hasn't played all year, and there is no reason for us to believe that he'll play in the postseason, although we shall see. I did see some video footage of him kind of playing around in uh, practice, so maybe we'll see him as they go further along in the postseason. Who knows? The other thing is Paul George, Robin to Kawhi's Batman, hasn't played in at least one third of the season. He missed a lot of games with an injury. And these are the two players that would make us want to watch this team. So most folks are not tuning in to watch the supporting cast play in these regular season games. But what they've done very quietly with the amazing leadership of Tyron Lu is win enough games to secure a place in the play-in tournament. They are in a position that they probably will not be moved from. They have an opportunity to play two games to get into the postseason. And with Paul George playing at the level that he's played in these games where he's been back, with the very slim hope that Kawhi Leonard could come back the further along they progress into the postseason, this is a team that you can't count out. And I'm interested to see how their postseason evolves. And this is definitely a story to watch. Last but certainly not least, I'm going to talk about the Golden State Warriors. In any other circumstance, I wouldn't necessarily include them on this list. But we know that in the last several months, this last portion of the regular season, a lot of the focus has been on the Lakers and their struggles, and then also on the Suns and the Grizzlies and the Nets. These are teams that have a lot of buzz around them, and the Warriors, while we typically would be talking about them if Stephen Curry was playing, their supporting cast that they have, including, respectfully, Klay Thompson, don't garner that level of interest. And if you also look at their last 10 games, they're 3-7, and seven. so we aren't putting them in a dominant position to win the West because it's very challenging to imagine that they can get past the Grizzlies, the Suns, the Mavericks, the Jazz, the Nuggets, or even the Timberwolves or the Clippers, respectfully, with the roster that they've been playing. But when Stephen Curry comes back, if he's getting off and his shooting is on point, this team is virtually unbeatable. So they're not going to just lay down. 
And I think that if their offense is working, Jordan Poole is playing at a high level. Stephen Curry is in his bag. Klay Thompson is, is supporting and playing within his role because I think for him there's definitely a transition that's happening in his career because of the injuries that he's had. Again, respectfully, he's an amazing shooter. He's already accomplished a lot. Um, but they need Stephen Curry. So that's an X factor that you cannot count out because Stephen Curry is the greatest shooter ever in basketball. And if he's doing well and he, like I said, if he's in his bag and he's shooting lights out, it's very hard to beat them. So drop it in the comment section. Who do you think that I've missed that we may see in the postseason just shock us and turn basketball upside down? I want to hear your thoughts. Let's get it, the conversation popping in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. Help your girl get to a thousand subscribers. We've made it to 200 subscribers. I am so thankful and grateful for everyone that's ever supported my channel. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Stay safe and stay blessed. I'm out.